Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Continence Chats, where we give catheter users the opportunity to share their story of living with a catheter. Today, we've got joining us Vicky from Kent. Vicky is a young lady who has a catheter, and she's going to share what life is like as a younger person living with a suprapubic catheter. So without further ado, let's begin Continence Chats. Hi, Vicky. Hi. Um, Welcome to Continence Chats and thanks for being um, willing to join us today. It's really good to, to have you with us. Um, so tell me a bit about who you are. Where do you live? Uh, what do you do with your time? Have you got plans for the future? Okay, um, I'm a 22-year-old who lives in Canterbury, Kent. And at the minute, I'm in the midst of pursuing a paediatric nursing degree. Great, great. And... Uh, you mentioned earlier when we were chatting that you've got plans to to move. Um, anything, oh yeah, would you share anything about that? To Leicester, and um, because my brother actually does, well, he's in the development squad for GBs, which I rugby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's we're great. Them, so. Exciting. Um, big shout out to Leicester there, being a Leicester dweller myself. Um, so. A lot of people might be surprised. Um, here's a younger person on Continence Chats who, you know, often um, people tend to associate continence difficulties with um, with older people. Um, but what was it that what, that got you started on your journey to needing a catheter? Can you share a bit about your story and 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 how that came about? Um, so at 17, I actually started having urinary urgency and incontinence, and I was actually wearing pull-ups. Um, and from then, my bladder kind of deteriorated due to um, Ellis Danlos, amongst other things. Um, I, well, I, my options were very limited with catheters because I can't self-cath. Mm -hmm. I can't have the SNS, which is the stimulator nerve system. I can't have that. Um, so... From there, really, all I had to do was have medication, which failed, and then superfluid capital was brought up to me. And after a lot, a lot of research, I decided that was the best option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how, what were your feelings like as you know you realised that you're struggling with with continence, and then you were kind of told that you would need a a superfluid catheter. Um, I suffered quite a bit. I was going 10 plus times a night, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. I was having constant urinary infections. Um, I, I didn't go out and think, oh, this is going to be fun. I went out and thought, where's the closest toilet? Mm -hmm. So as someone who is 17, 18, 19, that was a massive thing. And it actually impacted my life quite a lot. So when I was told that I was going to have a super week after, I was actually relieved mm -hmm. because it gave me back control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was wow. relieved. And what was the procedure like for you? Um, you know, some people are anxious about having a super pubic catheter, what it might be like, the procedure, and afterwards, what was your experience of that? Um, for me. The procedure wasn't bad at all. Um, I made sure, like Tracy said in the episode, episode one, um, I made sure I had everything indoors so I didn't have to worry about anything. Um, my family are incredible as well. So the whole worries about, oh, am I going to be able to get around? I had none of those. Mm -hmm. um, Pain-wise, for me, obviously everyone is different. Pain-wise for me, it wasn't that bad at all. Um, and you learn so quickly with a super pubic catheter it becomes the normal very very quick mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. the procedure itself wasn't that bad mm -hmm. I mean it's interesting you mentioned about uh, family and how supportive they were um, I guess some of the people watching continence chats may not actually be those who have a catheter but perhaps someone who's supporting a loved one with a catheter and yeah, um, sure. what was it about your family that was a great help to you and and what advice would you give to somebody who perhaps is caring for someone who who's going to have a catheter or has one already what would you say um, um my advice would be to listen because there's 101 questions that you might not be able to answer but listening helps so much 
for example, I was very, very worried the night before my superpubic operation. And I actually spoke to my other half and I said, I don't want to do it. Like, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you've got to do it. You are strong enough to do it. And just that gave me the confidence to do mm-hmm. it. Like family and friends are such an incredible thing. All my family get involved. They joke if, for example, my cafeter was to leak, which they do, it happens, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. We just laugh it off. It's not something to be embarrassed about at mm-hmm. all. It doesn't matter if you are 17 or younger or 80 and older. Like, it's such a natural thing. It's just a coloured liquid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what I like to say is, um, everyone wheeze, I just happen to wee in a bag. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's... Mm-hmm not something to be embarrassed about and just open up to family mm-hmm. members, I guess. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that perhaps um, a number of people would struggle with, that idea of a stigma. How do you, you know, how do you overcome that? How do you overcome that in your own life? Um, um, what would you say um, when people might feel that way? Um, I still struggle. I'm not going to lie. I am quite confident with my catheter. I go out, my tube is on show. Mm-hmm. I use the night bags and I put it in a backpack. Not everyone with superior catheter is going to agree with that, but that's what I think is more easy for me. Uh-huh. Um, but I will say I went to Florida with my family and obviously it's very hot. So I was using my leg bag and people do look and it's a natural thing for them to look. It's something different. It's something they don't necessarily experience every day, Yeah, but they take it with a grain of salt. And carry on at the end of the day it's just a colored liquid uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, you said you went to florida now I, I imagine some people might hear you know i'm gonna i'm gonna need a catheter well that's the end of my life i can't travel etc um <laughs> what would you say you know in terms of um how, how would you advise someone who's going to have a catheter and is anxious about not being able to travel or those kind of things um what was your experience when i first googled about superior catheter which we all do when we're going to have something new um i read quite a few articles that said oh you'll never be able to go swimming you'll never be able to do this you'll never be able to do that i then quickly joined the facebook group that chasey's on about and instantly they put that at ease if you have any questions about that sort of thing they'll tell you airport security easy it like some people said that's going to be really difficult no it was easy Florida, I was really worried about being hydrated as I'm on a constant flow. It was easy. There's no difference other than the fact in the morning you change the bag or empty the bag and you put on a leg bag. Your life doesn't end because of the catheter. If anything, and I'm sure my family would agree, um, flow, which is what I call my catheter, (laughs) saved my life. So definitely, like, don't be scared of that because your life is definitely not going to end uh-huh uh-huh having a good sense of humor sounds like it's a, a key part of it oh, i get that from my granddad <laughs> <laughs> lovely um so what's life like for you with a super pubic catheter to talk us through kind of the, the daily routine and, and maybe over a week as well um what what, what life looks like with a super pubic catheter <laughs> Um, I think a lot of people would expect life to be completely different, but actually it's not. The only difference is, obviously, if I was to get up and I didn't pick up my bag, it would pull. So you get used to it. You get in a routine, showering, bathing, all of that sort of thing is exactly the same. The only thing that is different is I don't put bath bombs in my bath because of irritation. So you do have to give up a couple of things, but I'm sure some of the ladies and gentlemen on the um, Facebook page will tell you if you introduce things slowly, you can actually build it up. Nothing Mm -hmm. changes. In a week, again, nothing's different other than the fact that I have to carry around the bag. That is exactly Mm -hmm. it. Um, I will say I unfortunately have my tube changes every four weeks. Some people can go up to 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm not that lucky. However, my tube changes, you get used to them. They're not pleasant, obviously, but they're not as bad as the horror stories say they are. Mm-hmm. All you've got to do is follow a couple of rules and again, talk. Communication is such a big thing. Talking to a nurse and saying, oh, I'm a bit nervous. 
can you talk me through it? Can you tell me what you're doing as you go? Helps a lot. Mm -hmm. What has your experience been like in terms of your relationship with healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, uh, positives, the negatives, any advice you can give? Um, Positive wise, uh, I've had quite a few doctors advocate for me. Yeah. And advocate for my mom. Negative wise, there's always going to be something. At the end of the day, medicine is not perfect. Mm -hmm. There's no right or wrong answer. When I left hospital after I had my superior catheter placed, I actually left with no codes. I didn't know how to place orders for my bags. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know how to clean my site. I left with a um, antispasmodic that I was actually allergic to. So I had quite a terrible start, but I contacted my GP who deals with a lot of my things and instantly she put me at ease. We got me on a antispasmodic that worked for me. Everything is trial and error with catheters. I've trialed three different brands of catheter. Um, and I will say that the link catheters are definitely the best ones. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on the page. I'm saying that as someone who has trialed a couple of catheters, I've not trialed as many as Tracy, but I can say the silicone is definitely better than the latex for my body anyway. My advice would be everything is trial and error. It's like trying on clothes. You've got to wait until you get the right fit. Mm -hmm. Catheters are just like that. And in terms of... um making decision about choosing a catheter what were perhaps some of the issues you've experienced with catheters and and what made you choose to kind of settle with one particular type of catheter what what was your experience uh my first catheter that i had placed so that is the one that i had placed during the operation which you don't have any choice with obviously the surgeon picks that um that was okay i did have some issues with my site i had granulation tissue Mm -hmm. Um, and I did have a couple of infections with my site I then had my first tube change it was pretty difficult not in the sense it was really painful as in the sense that the tube became quite stuck Mm -hmm. however like as you go on you'll realize that that it's just part of life Um, the second tube that I did trial um, I ended up going in as a emergency appointment because I was having non-stop issues with it Mm -hmm. Uh, site was pretty terrible I was having constant blocking I was having infections and I had an emergency change at four weeks and then from then I ordered the link sample and I didn't know that you could pick your own catheter it was never told to me Mm -hmm. so I just brought the box along and I asked the nurse who does my tube changes is there any way I could use this tube and she said yes of course like it's such a normal thing they're so used to going over this again there's no wrong or right answer so if you have any questions just ask it and I knew pretty instantly I had no spasms after the change when the link capital was placed I have absolutely no problems with my sight anymore um I have very very little blocking and I have very little infections since mm-hmm. I've been using link capital. So, yeah. Again, it's just trial and error. Sure. And I think um, we've covered this on other episodes, but in terms of uh, um, that, the importance of knowing that you have that choice is so, so key, isn't it? Um, yeah, it definitely gives you back some power that you uh-huh. think feel like you might lost, but yeah again it's trial and error everyone is different what works for me might not necessarily work for you mm-hmm. but what i would say is definitely trial different mm-hmm. catheters mm-hmm. um and a silicone catheter is a lot easier than a latex catheter in my opinion mm-hmm. so i would order a link sample and i'd try it i'd take it along to your tube change and go from there sure and uh, you know all of the it's worth pointing out that all of the um continents product companies offer samples and you can just literally go onto their websites um and and order them and you normally get them relatively quickly and and you can try them um 
and did you say that you you got a sample and then you asked for the nurse to 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 insert it when it came time for a change? Is that what happened? So my tube changes are actually, believe it or not, done in A and E in Canterbury. Okay. I don't know why, but they are. Um, and I bring my catheter with me, so it's delivered by my chosen delivery company, which is Charter. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it comes to tube change day, I just bring it with me. They insert it. It's that simple. It's honestly not as difficult as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've obviously had some difficulties that have been um, sorted by switching product, but are there any other challenges that you still face? Um, and, and how do you deal with those? Uh, I think I had two really big challenges with my super catheter. One being how it would fit affect the intimacy with my other half mm -hmm. and that is a big thing um and can i just say talk to your partner it's that simple again it's communication and scott instantly put me at ease there's no mm -hmm. problems with that the other issue i have is being someone with autism i was very worried about the sensory aspect of mm -hmm. my kids now for me again everyone is very different but i don't have any sensory issues with my tube at all and i know it's very difficult to find any videos about super pubic catheters in general let alone someone with autism with a super pubic catheter mm -hmm. but again there's no sensory issues there everyone has spasms whether you're autistic or not and again you trial these anti-spodomatic medication mm -hmm. and you go from there so yeah they were my two main challenges mm -hmm. just again communication talking to medical professionals and family members mm -hmm. and thankfully they have resolved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um is there any advice that you would give um general advice to to someone who um, is considering having a super pubic catheter, particularly a younger person, um, and they've been told that's on the option table and they're deciding what to do, what would be your general advice? I mean, I know you've given, um, you've already said a few things, but is there anything else you'd say to them? I think the main thing I would say is, please, please, please do not be embarrassed to speak up. Bladder issues, incontinence, retention, etc., are very common. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more common than people realise. And if everyone spoke up about it, it would actually be a norm. Mm -hmm. um, it is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. It's something, unfortunately, that you have no control over. Mm -hmm. um, ever. There is a lot of options out there. If mm -hmm. you have been told that you need an indwelling catheter or a superhubic catheter, research. Research is key. And again, communication get advice from different doctors, get advice from people who actually live with super pubic catheters, research different companies. There's so much information out there, it's just sort of hidden. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. research, communication, and don't be embarrassed. I think that's the advice I'd give. Great. And going back to your chosen career path as a, a pediatric, pediatric nurse, um, not every not every nurse is going to have the insight as um, of somebody who already has chronic health difficulties. Yeah. Um, how, how do you think it's going to change your, um, the way that you approach nursing as somebody who ha already has, who has chronic health problems? How would you say it's impacted both your decision to go into it and how it will impact your life as a nurse? My decision to go into it, I have met some incredible nurses uh -huh. uh, and incredible doctors. And I love medicine as long as it's not on me. <laughs> um, so I think the passion behind that led me to go into it. Um, I would say for me, having an insight of what it's like to be an actual patient gives me a, sim a sympathy um, aspect to it. So, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that's really important because it's all right knowing all the medical terms. But if you can't sympathise with someone, then you can't really help them. And again, you have to be someone who they can communicate with. And as someone who's had to ask for help, I want to be someone who 
can be asked for help. Mm -hmm. In most of the continents chats um, so far, um, each each person that I've talked to has has mentioned that there's been one or two really important, either a doctor or a nurse who's really taken the time to listen and understand and uh, um, and and made such a difference to their journey. Um, and I think that's that's a common theme that's coming up. So, well, I guess we all have our favourites. <laughs> percent and mine would be my uh, GP she's uh -huh. incredible um I couldn't fault her and I don't think I would have been able to do any of this without her but like I said at the beginning I had quite a few doctors advocate for me um I actually brought up my incontinence issues not to a urologist I brought it up to my gynecologist mm -hmm. um, and from then he referred me to a specialist that he knew so what I would say is whether it seems like a very small thing, still bring it up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Vicky. Is there anything else you want to share with anyone that's listening? Um, anything that's on your heart? or uh... <laughs> uh, Don't be embarrassed. If you need to talk to someone, definitely join the Facebook groups. Google. Communicate there's so many of us on the Facebook groups and we're all very nice and you can message us privately or post a um, status to the group and everyone will help you. Great. Well, thanks Vicky. Um, just to let, <laughs> let you know if you're, if you're watching that we're going to be um, linking to the, to the super pubic catheters Facebook group um, uh, down below. And uh, you, as, as Vicky said, you can get in contact with members on there. And if you need anything from link medical, we're, I'm here to help get in contact with us um, drop us a comment um, and uh, we'd be glad to uh, glad to help us as, as far as we can um, obviously everything that we've discussed today we'd emphasize is not medical advice it's the story um, of uh, of an individual um, so please do check anything with your doctor or your nurse before you make any changes to your care um, but Vicky it's been great to meet you and uh, all the best in your in your nursing career um, uh, and also your move to the wonderful city of Leicester, which is currently, as, as we record, on extra lockdown at the moment. So uh, we're not allowed out apart from the city uh, to the city boundary. So, uh, yeah, great. Thanks very much, Vicky. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Hey. Thanks for joining this week's episode of Continence Chats. I hope you found this episode helpful. Please like and subscribe if you want to uh, find out about more videos from Link Medical and more episodes of Continence Chats. You can also sign up to our email uh, system so you can get updated with uh, the latest episode straight into your inbox. If you are a catheter user and you would like to take part in Continence Chats, please do get in touch with us and you can uh, find out how to do that using the details below this video. Take care.